I'm not a financial advisor, and I have a bias towards the XX network. The more corrupt the state, the more numerous the laws. So no XRP. Uh, I would argue that XRP is more likely a security than a non-security. <laughs> this is Aaron Kaplan. He's from Prometheum. He's one of the few people that received SEC clarity with the SEC and yet you have, right? So, you know, was this this sort of uphill battle and and this difficult situation that everybody described it to be or was it relatively smooth? Uh, It was a long process, but I don't think it was difficult. I think that uh, overall there is a compliant means by which to trade and custody digital assets under the securities laws in the United States and uh, companies that want to be compliant have to follow those laws. The entire crypto industry has had a battle with the SEC. They have no path to move forward. Yet Aaron Kaplan is saying that it was a long process, but there is a path forward. So why is that? Is or what is isn't a security? Uh, at the moment, we haven't announced our assets, but I would say that uh, Chairman Gensler has said that uh, the overall majority of digital assets are securities, uh, arguably everything except for Bitcoin. And we take the same uh, opinion on that. Prometheum had two seed round investors. One was Hashkey and one was Wang Chao Blockchain. In this SEC document, this is a strategic partnership between Wang Chao and if you look here, who signed it? Dr. Chao Fang and also Martin H. Kaplan. Martin H. Kaplan happens to be the father of Aaron Kaplan that we just heard from. Well, in regards to ETH, I would say uh, you should go back to the initial issuance in the ICO. Uh, I would argue it was an investment contract then. It's always been been an investment contract, and therefore it's most likely a security. Uh, In regards to the way we analyze and determine whether an asset is a security, uh, that's an internal compliance and operational determination based on significant legal, operational, and a a plethora of factors, uh, and is made at the different brokerage level, whether at the ProCap level, uh, Promethean Capital, at the Special Purpose Broker Dealer, or at the Promethean ATS level. Dr. Chao Feng is a well-respected investor in China. Dr. Chao Feng is also the hash key group chairman, as well as Wang Chao Blockchain. He's one of the early advocates and investor in blockchain technology in Asia. Dr. Chao donated $500,000 to the then 20-year-old Vitalik Buterin and the Ethereum Foundation. They've supported the work of Ethereum since, since its inception. Without objection. This concern, which Prometheum themselves raised in 2020, probably sounds familiar for those who track this committee closely. It is the exact same concern we've heard from witnesses in front of this committee before. How can a broker-dealer register if they don't know which assets are a security and which are not? Further, it makes the same argument that other firms have made that the lack of clarity from the SEC puts an undue burden on the industry. Mr. Kaplan. In your testimony, you were very confident that no new legislation is needed in the digital assets space to clarify this question. What has changed between the date of this letter in 2021 and when your firm called for clarity? And now, what has changed? Over the two plus years since that time, there's been additional enforcement actions and statement by the SECs, which have clarified any questions that we had in regards to the a designation of a digital asset as a security. Aaron Kaplan was invited to speak at a congressional meeting. Now, Prometheum is not a very common name. Why was he selected to speak at a congressional meeting? He ended up petitioning the SEC prior to this invite, asking, begging for clarity. And now he's in front of Congress telling, telling congressional members that the SEC is right and the laws are clear. Crypto companies just aren't following the laws. Mr. Kaplan, Prometheum's website says that Prometheum ATS supports, quote, many tokens that mostly trade on crypto exchanges, end quote. I'd like to dig in on that just a little bit. Can Prometheum customers trade in either? If your answer is yes, please explain how. Not currently. Can Prometheum customers trade in Bitcoin? If your answer is yes, please explain how. No. Just for the audience at home's benefit, Ether and Bitcoin make up more than 60% of the digital asset market. Mr. Kaplan, given that either Ether and Bitcoin make up more than 60% of the digital asset market, 
If the current system is working, why can't your customers trade the most popular and widely used digital assets? Regulation and new ATSs and custodians uh, should take a crawl, walk, run approach. And essentially, uh, they will proceed to add additional assets and abilities as time goes on. I'd like to point out when the... Uh, I'm going to reclaim my time. Mr. Kaplan, did Prometheum receive any additional exemptive relief from the SEC that has not been publicly shared? No. He's really quick and defensive when he says no. He shared... No. No. Look at Aaron Kaplan's body language. His arms are folded between his legs and he's almost quivering while congressional members are asking him questions. Now, I'm not going to pretend like I'm a body language expert, but I did Google what this means. Anytime hands are hidden, especially if they're sandwiched between the legs, this is likely signals of insecurity or lower confidence. Did a topic come up that the person didn't like? Are they around new people and feeling uncomfortable? Is there other dominant individuals around? Possible to integrate into, say, let's cash app or, or transfer wise or something like that? Absolutely. Um, so the, the beauty of CMIX is it's a general data processing network. So all rounds, like Ben explained, there's five nodes. They pr process a batch of a thousand. We call it messages, but it's in fact really just, I think it's one kilobyte, if I'm not mistaken, of data in each of those a thousand messages, right? So you can pack any data you want in there. Proxy is a new dApp that utilizes the XX network and CMIX. Proxy will break the link between you and your transaction. It can be used for anything, and that is being worked on. However, right now, you can use it for your crypto wallet. Any wallet that lets you customize your own RPC, you can use Proxy with. So check it out at proxy.xx.network. There is, and the, but there are some constraints in terms of where the regulations are going in China. So our founder, um, Dr. Xiaofeng, who actually founded Bozera Asset Management, um, he actually had the foresight to think, hey, number one, regulation is the only way to go. Uh, regulation and being regulated is the only way to survive for all products. And he started his early career as a regulator, um, also working at the stock exchange, at the Shenzhen Stock Exchange. So he had the foresight to set up this company two, almost two plus years ago in Hong Kong. And it was his goal to set up a uh, Asian region powerhouse to build a financial uh, and digital assets group. Um, and that's exactly what we've done. And we're following his blueprint uh, in terms of expanding outwards. So this is Dr. Chow Feng. Again, he's the all in payment network. He has over 20 years in Chinese securities and asset management industry. He's one of the founders of one of the largest mutual funds and the first in China. He's well connected in China. And it looks like he's the head of Hashkey Capital, Wang Chao, and Fen Fenboy Capital. He's also a board member of Prometheum. Uh, has been a very, very big area. But our, shall we say, our parent um, uh, group, is so powerful in the area of blockchain. Now that is very, very clear. And that is an aspiration of China uh, to be a leader in blockchain. And that's an area where Wanshan Blockchain, uh, who is part of our parent company, um, that just dovetails in terms of the technology and working together uh, with China and coordinating with them. So I can only see that there'll be more growth in, once we get our licenses, there'll be more growth in terms of how we can use what they're doing in China internationally, how we can actually bring our expertise out. So in the immortal words of Mr. Charles Lee, we're connecting China to the world and the world to China. Hashkey, Wang Chao Labs, University, it's just really one large conglomerate. And Dr. Feng Chao is a highly respected, educated person and holds a lot of position in China. As a matter of fact, Wang Chao Labs is working with China. They committed $29 billion for the one of the first smart cities that are going to happen. 
Now, Promethium received funding from Hashkey and Wang Chao, which is basically the same company. Hashkey is a child company of Wang Chao. So Wang Chao is, is the parent company. It started off in automotive and branched into blockchain labs, blockchain university, Hashkey. It created all these different entities. And Promethium received funding from two of these entities, and the SEC chose to give them clarity first. U.S. companies are waiting in line. You hear Brian Armstrong complaining. You hear the Gemini twins complaining. Everybody's complaining, yet Promethium gets to cut the line. They get clarity first. They said it was a very long process, but doable. Procedures, uh, onboarding, uh, making sure that you know your client. So all of the traditional um, areas for people like us in financial services and traditional financial services, it's quite I won't say simple, but it's 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 the normal uh, path. And I have to say, when I was at the SFC, I wrote those rules to do that. So we're just sort of following the rules that I sort of helped write or contribute to. Angelina Kwan held positions of power in Hong Kong. This is why Hashkey is really prominent in Asia. They hire ex-regulators in order to get moved forward. They're making very sizable investments there. They are a whale in the crypto space, and specifically they're branching out in the Asian region. The Hinman speech documents, including internal SEC emails and comments leading up to this now infamous 2018 speech, they've finally been unsealed. Hinman's speech created new factors to determine if a token becomes sufficiently decentralized to no longer be considered a security. At best, these documents show that senior officials at the SEC couldn't agree on the law and told Bill Hinman directly he would confuse the public even more about the rules for crypto. At worst, they show that Hinman deliberately ignored the law, and he tried to create new laws something only Congress can do. And while he was a public servant, Hinman received millions of dollars of payments from his law firm, which was part of an alliance with others that had a vested interest in this speech. This NASDAQ article states, Wang Cheng Blockchain Labs, which has made it their mission in China to bring Ethereum to the mainstream and also in part to savvy and persistent efforts by Buterin himself. Wang Cheng Blockchain Labs are making good inroads in China. Wang Cheng is now China's top funder of promising blockchains. Experimenting with Ethereum technology by Ant Financial, Alibaba's 60 billion financial arm to improve their global payments platform. The first high-profile Chinese deal blocked under Donald Trump. On Tuesday, a U.S. panel rejected the $1.2 billion sale of money transfer company MoneyGram to Ant Financial, owned by top execs of Chinese tech titan Alibaba. The panel cited worries over national security on data that may be used to identify U.S. citizens. The deal's collapse is a blow for Alibaba head Jack Ma, who aimed to expand Ant's reach abroad as competition gets fierce over payment services in China. As Ant Financial was blocked as a matter of national security. Simpson and Thatcher, Citibank, they were representing Ant Financial and Alibaba. Bank of America was serving as legal advisors for MoneyGram. But think about the U.S. government actually interfering with the acquisition of national security. Then Ripple comes along, goes through the proper motions, purchases the majority shares of MoneyGram, and then partners with them. Shortly after, the SEC goes after Ripple and sues them for the sales of XRP. The partnership is derailed. This is a matter of national security. Digital currencies is the evolution of money. That's why the U.S. president had to step in and actually stop the acquisition of MoneyGram from Ant Financial. What we saw play out in our case, what we saw play out in our case. Brad is talking in past tense. When you're in ongoing litigation, lawyers will tell their clients not to say anything, to keep their mouths shut. Brad posted this video on Twitter talking in past tense, and we haven't heard a word yet. Is exactly what's still happening. The SEC is looking to kill crypto innovation in the United States, and its current chair, an unelected bureaucrat, I might add, is weaponizing the lack of regulatory clarity to exert jurisdiction over the entire crypto space. At the Global Blockchain Summit, EEA, China said that it's the main objective to explore, develop new standards, 
and technologies using blockchains so the, that Chinese enterprises can make it more easily meet domestic market needs. Founding members of EEA include JP Morgan, Santander, CME Group, Microsoft, Intel, etc., and blockchain startup consensus. On June 4th, Hinman wrote that he didn't see a, quote, need to regulate Ether as a security and set up a call with Ethereum's co-founder Vitalik Buterin later that week to, quote, confirm our understanding. The regulators are supposed to be tech neutral. Bill Hinman calls Vitalik Buterin prior to the speech to ask for clarification on how it should be worded. There's another conflict of interest. Nate Hinman, that's Bill Hinman's son, works for a company called Plug and Play. Plug and Play is using Ethereum's technology. You can see Vitalik Buterin. Nate Hinman is an employer and advisor. And here's Bill Hinman in the background. Power does not corrupt. Fear corrupts. Perhaps the fear of a loss of power. Thanks, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the show. Please take a moment to like and subscribe. If you enjoy content like this, please consider joining my Patreon or my ghost site, dmjr.ghost.io. Thanks, guys.